What is going on everybody? It is Alex coming back at you with another video and today we are continuing this mock draft for a round two tomorrow for a round three. So stay tuned. If you guys are new, check out round one first. I'll be doing a quick little recap here for y'all anyway. If you guys do not know, if you guys don't follow Brushmo, I just did a three round mock draft with him over there. So feel free to check that out. So again, hopefully that's going to be up by the time this is, you know, posted. But if it's a spoiler, I guess you have a little bit of a surprise waiting for you. But we're going to do a quick little recap here. I'm going to let y'all read. I'm going to do the exact same. I don't believe there was anybody who was substituted here. We, of course, will be going back to reference this. But um, starting from now on, uh, well, actually from after this mock draft on, we are going to be switching up the site that we use for... Um, for these mock drafts because of the fact that the draft order just never is perfect with this. So um, this is relatively accurate. And honestly, the draft order is going to change anyways. So this is a fairly accurate representation of it. We got to swap the Cowboys and Bengals picks. We'll do that when the time comes. It's They're never really going to interfere with each other anyway. But let's have some fun. Let's get right into this. Pick number 32. Okay, Quentin Johnston. He actually was not taken. So I, I was, funnily enough, I was saying I was reading. I was not. Uh, Jordan Addison as well as uh, Bryce Young. So at this spot, edge rusher to me, probably going to be the premium position. Linebacker certainly at least is in the consideration. I do really like what you can get out of Drew Sanders. I do. But this does have some dudes in the class that you could probably try to snipe down the board. Um, one of those, it's kind of disrespectful that they don't have him on here, Tommy Eichenberg. I need to show him some love as well, but Drew Sanders certainly is a guy who's a front runner for this pick. He's a really damn good, very solid linebacker, deserves a lot of respect, former edge rusher as well. So, uh, yeah, definitely he's a damn good player, but BJ Ojolari has just so much potential. I might as well continue stacking up on that defensive front. Really, really good player. As you guys can see, this is my board right under my face. So uh, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. Uh, it's like 99% up to date. Of course, we don't know certain people's declarations or not. We'll have all of that soon enough. But some of my favorite players have unfortunately decided to piece the scene. Pick number 33 for the Steelers. So we, of course, got Peter Skronsky. I mean, there's no other pick I usually go with in the first. So Peter Skronsky with our first pick. Um, this one, of course, for Chase Claypool, which has been, I mean, that's a damn good, uh, that was a damn good trade for the Steelers. And of course, it was to the other team I root for, the Bears. So, you know, it was going to be a net zero anyways. But I do like the idea of going a corner here. Devon Witherspoon, uh, Clark Phillips, you know, to be fair, we are losing Cam Sutton potentially to free agency this year. And I would love to see how Clark Phillips can fit in as that slot slash boundary, which we usually do that anyways. It sucks because I really wish we had Mike Hilton. Then we wouldn't even have to be forced into a pick like this. But Clark Phillips is a damn good player, and I'm trying to put a little bit more respect on his name. He is a really, really fun player to watch. So, um, you know what? Let's have a little bit of fun here. I have not drafted Clark Phillips to the Steelers. I think it's a good spot for him. He's a damn good player. And he's gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with Jordan Addison, the one on the goal line. So I do like seeing those high-level wins. Eagles sitting here. A lot of y'all don't like the fact that I keep trading up with them. You don't realize the fact that Howie's been trading back so many times to pick up future draft capital because y'all aren't ready. You're ready. So getting the best value to me definitely seems like the right thing to do. There's not many teams with draft capital or the lack of needs that want to move up. So, I mean... You have to think about it. It does make logical sense for now Howie to be able to move up. He's moved up in, I think, the past couple drafts as well, a couple spots, which he's sent like a third round pick for. So I don't think it's out of the question to be able to go after, you know, another player um, and be able to move up for him. But I digress. We'll do some mocks where they, of course, do not trade up. That's the whole entire point of me doing the no trades mocks in the first place to see what would happen if they stayed at their spot. But again, with our first pick, we went Miles Murphy. We don't have that pick here. We traded back so that Osiris Torrance could go to the Eagles. Not to the Eagles, to the damn Seahawks. I don't know what I'm saying. But at this spot, I think Garrett Williams is a great get. You know, he's you don't know exactly how heavy your man versus zone is going to be. Garrett Williams tore his ACL. I, the reason I haven't been drafting him is because I thought he was going to return. But he tore it earlier in the year, so he will be back. And he was a phenomenal talent. Phenomenal. He was a top 15 guy for me. So... 
I love him to death. I'm so excited that he's at least able to be drafted at this spot. With the ACL tear, he's number 35 on my board, which, I mean, hell, if you traded back, you got some extra draft capital, seems like the right thing to do. Uh, pick number 35 for the Rams. Apparently, you know, apparently Matt Stafford ain't going to be retiring. So, you know, I don't necessarily agree with that. I think he should retire. You know, you got your ring. Now you're having injuries pile up. Like, there's no real reason to not retire. But Darnell Wright, I think that's great. I love the idea of Darnell Wright here. Left, right tackle versatility. To me, that is going to be heavily coveted in a team that kind of looking for an offensive tackle to be like at a high level. So I like it. Darnell Wright is the move. Pick number 36 for the Cardinals. Um, So, man, with the first pick, we traded back, didn't we? And we got Keely Ringo. So that's kind of a dream scenario. I think you got future first from that as well. So you traded back, you got Keely. Now I think it's the time to address offensive line. Right tackle still is a concern, in my opinion. I don't think Beecham's going to necessarily come back, but everything on that offensive line, also a concern. So I'm pretty happy with any choice here. John Michael Schmitz, Andrew Voorhees. I'm going to go with Voorhees. He's a day one starter. You want to protect um, Kyler Murray as much as you can, and he's going to be that guy who just steps in immediately and plays at a super high level. Uh, he also has tackle versatility in case that ever works out at the next level. Pick number 37. So Will Levis on the squad. Ah, man. I mean, Devon Witherspoon feels like he could be definitely a top-tier option for the Colts. Now, we still have some good line. We have linebackers on the board that are really good, too. Not the team that I would take them to, but that just popped into my mind. Definitely somebody who I would want to at least think about getting. But Blake Freeland's here. Dress the offensive line. I know corner is a position to look at, but... There are some guys like Darius Rush down the board that definitely have some form of potential. Pick number 38 for the Falcons. I'm curious what we did in the first. I would not be surprised if it were an edge rusher. Um, who was it? Did we? Where the hell is their pick? Oh, wow, it's at pick seven. Man, I keep forgetting. I'm like so used to them being at like 12. Uh, Jared Verse, nice. I still think linebacker in the second feels like it could be certainly a thing. Corner as well could certainly be a thing. Devon Witherspoon, not necessarily the guy I would go after. Tyreek Stevenson is somebody who I would trade up for at the end of the second. I do like Tyreek Stevenson a lot. I think, he, is he visible for you guys on here? No, he is not. So um, I'm trying to see. There he is, 54 on my board. I do like Tyreek Stevenson a lot. So addresser solved. Defensive interior, still a big need. And I think that Tyler Davis definitely should be on a short list of dudes who go in this range. He is a really talented edge rusher. I do think he's going to go higher than expected. He's going to shine out at the senior bowl. He really is like a much better version of what we saw last year. And it's it's a guy out of Oklahoma. I keep forgetting his name, but Perry on Winfrey. I'm going to have him. We're going to go Tyler Davis here. He's a special, special talent. I don't think that people really have watched the tape enough to say that Tyler Davis is not worth this pick. Really damn good player. I have a lot of respect for Tyler Davis. Pick number 39 for the Panthers. So, again, we moved up. We we were balling, man. We moved up, and we got ourselves some C.J. Stroud. Which, again, y'all can debate whether Matt Carell is going to be that guy for you or not. I respect that. But the fact is, this mock definitely assumes that that would be the case. Devon Witherspoon does not seem like he's out of the question for this pick. I think that... Like, most Panthers fans are clamoring for a corner. So I do think that should be on the short list of positions to go after as well. Uh, Edge rusher, there are still some phenomenal players here. Nolan Smith definitely feels like a type of guy to fill in the Hassan Reddick role. I love that fit, personally. I think that I would would want that above all else. But I'm going to make a small trade here. And I'm giving a middle finger to to one of my teams in divisions, the New Orleans Saints. So we're, we're jumping them. We're having the Raiders move up here. Uh, I'm I'm kind of done using the numerical chart because it's we all know it's just a rough approximation. Um, we are going to be offering 137. It is a fairly solid offering. We're going to get the same guy anyways. So um, the Raiders are moving up. Just like Tanner McKee, 
above the Saints. Tanner McKee fits exactly the system that McDaniels runs, so I think that actually be a very beneficial system for him. Pick number 40 for the Saints. Um, edge rusher, like defensive line, I, we should just say defensive line, is a big priority. And I love the idea of going key on white. I think that somebody, have I already drafted the love of my life? I think I have, didn't I? I did. Love it. Isaiah McGuire. Isaiah McGuire is like a dream pick for this team. So looking for someone who's about like 270, like 265, 270 plus, maybe even up into the 280 range. So for me, when I see that, um, I'm looking at Keon White. I do like Keon White in this range, but Carl Brooks feels like a phenomenal option. Great player. He deserves a lot of love. And I don't even know if I have him listed up there yet, but he's a really, really special player. And he just doesn't go up against high enough level talent to get like reps where you can really see the projection. But he dominates at a lower level, and that's all you can ask him to do. It's not like he can force to play against higher level competition. He does a great job. So i uh, got to show some love to Carl Brooks there. Uh, pick number 41. So we move back, and I think this is a good time to get Nolan Smith. He's a special edge rusher. Devon Witherspoon would have been awesome, but again, I just don't think that it's as big of a need um, as getting somebody of the talent level. It's not as good value as getting the talent level of Nolan Smith. Uh, this pick, man, I'm having a hard time not going Tyreek Stevenson. I am, because this dude is, mm, I mean, he's six foot two twelve. He's a big dude. And our first round pick was Quinn Johnston, trying to play some defense, so to speak, against, um, against Houston from not having to get him. So I'm definitely looking at that. That's a big one for me. But I also want to look at offensive line. And there are some really good players in here. There's some really good players. But I think going after Tyreek Stevenson is well worth it. Again, he's going to have a really good RAS because of his size as well. He's a very big dude. He's going to run the 4-4s. Four he's able to track very well on man coverage. He's exactly what you're looking for in a scheme fit. So this is a guy I would certainly be circling on my board as somebody to grab in day two. He might be there in round three, but... I mean, I just got to show some love for a player who I'm very passionate about. Pick number 43 for the Browns. Uh, Josh Downs certainly is a fun option for the team. I want to go Jalen Hyatt here uh, to be a nice compliment to Amari Cooper. He's just falling too far. I'm a big fan of Jalen Hyatt. As you guys can see, he is number 28 on my big board. I really like him. Pick number 44 for the Steelers. So... We ended up going after Clark Phillips. Could have gone Devon Witherspoon as well here, but you never know. Uh, linebacker Drew Sanders is still on the board. I think that's the position to get at this point. Uh, I know we need to fix offensive line, but when I want to change things up a little bit. I always go offensive line. I haven't gone Drew Sanders or Clark Phillips for this team, I don't think, ever. So they're both fun options to play around with the idea. Pick number 45. Now, Josh Downs would be a fun option if this team liked guys who are, you know, above 200 pounds um, or below 200 pounds at slot. Parker Washington's exactly that, but I'm never going to, I, I'm never going to say that he's going to be a second round pick. He's not going to test well enough. So for me, I want to get a hyper athletic tight end. That's Luke Musgrave, but listen, Mercedes Lewis 2.0 here, Darnell Washington. I'm glad that I came to that conclusion and then realized other people have come to that conclusion Definitely feels like a really cool, like, it's a really cool coincidence. Like, definitely feels like a perfect fit for a guy, even at his age, is still working so well in Green Bay's system. So, yeah, you're getting the younger version of Mercedes Lewis. That's great. Uh, this pick for Seattle, we already got offensive line. We've already gotten, what do we get earlier in this? Oh, we, we moved up. So we got Osiris Torrance. We have AR. Um, we could try to go, like, I'm trying to see. Because I remember there's another Florida guy that you guys were telling me to go nab at this spot. And I'm forgetting who it is. I'm just blanking on the moment. But, oh, Justin Shorter. That would be so fun. Not going to do it. I would love to. Not going to do it. Uh, we're going to go Luke Musgrave here. He is a super talented tight end. You guys value tight end at a very high level. There's a lot of rumors of Michael Mayer to this team. But Luke Musgrave, he's pretty much everything that you'd probably want from Noah Fant but probably at a much cheaper rate in the long run. Uh, Noah Fant is up for a contract next year, so being able to get a hyper-athletic tight end on a contract for four years at least, not a bad idea. 
And he's also pretty close to Seattle. They're up in Oregon State. So you're at least able to have your scouts have enough of pretty much enough eyes on. Not this season because he got injured early on. But man, he's going to be a freak. I love Luke Musgrave. Pick number 47 for the Patriots. Uh, First round, we went tackle. I don't even need to check it. This round, Devon Witherspoon is falling a little too far. Definitely feel like it would be a good move to be able to go after Devon. But I want a team to trade up for him. Because Patriots, yeah, you go for tight corners in round two, like Jawan Williams, but you guys have been having your bread and butter there in the later rounds, and I respect that. So a team that could definitely look that way is Washington. I think it went Anton Harrison for them earlier. So this is actually a perfect spot. Um, AFC to NFC trade up. And I mean, the Falcons could be trying to make this move as well, but we're not going to do that. We're going to the Washington Commanders, 52 to 47. Uh, I think a future third would probably definitely get this done. It says 41% chance. Therefore, Bill is going to have to toss in a future five. 60% chance sounds like a great deal to me. So Washington uses that to be able to move up. Listen, you guys can complain about the trade value. It won't affect this mock draft. If that, if you guys don't like that, let me know. Just don't be a dick about it because I would love to hear your thoughts. But I do think trading up, um, you're pretty much having equal pick value in that circumstance. If it is 60, that means that you know both teams are fairly balanced on that. Pick number 48 for the Jets. So I went after... Did I go after a safety in round one? I just have this weird gut feeling I did. I went after Trent Simpson, even better. I love it. Um, I think offensive line needs to be addressed. I do. And center definitely is on a short list of positions to be offed. So I think that John Michael Schmitz is definitely a day one dude. You're just going to help out the run game. I think that's a very smart thing to do. Pick 49 for the Leones. Now... Again, I like going after Luke Whippler for this team. I'm going to be honest. I really do like that. But I'm going to hold off. I'm going to hold off. We do have, I think, another pick. Or did we trade that? Okay, we traded it. But then I think we got another one in return. I digress. So sitting at this spot, we've already gotten Joey Porter. Um, 99% sure we got Joey Porter. Let's, Let's double check on that. Yeah, we got Joey Porter. And then we ended up trading all the way back to get Antonio Johnson. DB's are secured now what's the right move so not i'm not trading again that was my b uh tight end not going to be taking one running back not a bad idea and i'm assuming blake quorum's returning for this i do because you know when you get knee surgery and you have multiple years left of eligibility andrew quarterback's there for another year makes sense Uh, i'm gonna go jameer gibbs i haven't done this in a hot minute but jameer's gonna be going semi-high and um, definitely disarming other teams of the ability to get a superstar running back. Never a bad thing. Jamal Williams might be the guy who stays there. DeAndre Swift, injury concerns, getting somebody of that talent level continues to help the offense. Pick number 50 for the Buccaneers. I think that, who do we go with for them in the first? I So this is another reason why I'm going to be switching up the mock draft simulator. It really sucks that they just don't tell you who you've taken already. So we took Felix. We got an edge rusher. And this would have been a great spot for Jameer Gibbs, in my opinion. I know there's a lot of Rashad White truthers out there, but I, I'm not down for that. Luke Whipler, getting extra interior help, never a bad idea. Let's fortify those trenches. I don't think it's ever a bad thing to do for a team that's in a rebuild. Making sure you win the battle of the trenches, usually the smart thing to do. Pick number 51. So again, I'm always on team get offensive line in the first. And um, I listened to that. So... Yeah, big fan of that. We should probably try to target a weapon here. Josh Downs definitely feels like the guy who would just be a super nice compliment to Traylon Burks. He's definitely more of that speed. He's been tested, I think, at 4.38. So, you know, that's that's really nice. That's a really nice weapon there. Now, I don't think he's, like, I think he's kind of just Calvin Austin, but younger. But I really like Calvin Austin. So that's okay. Uh, go Steelers. But pick number 52. I'm going to scroll down my board so you guys get to see even more of my board Uh, for the Patriots. I think that Isaiah Foskey seems to be like my pick for them. I really do like that. And this was acquired in a trade back with Washington. Oh, right. (laughs) Uh, I just forgot about the fact that I just did that trade. Totally slipped my mind. But 
Yeah, offensive tackle was taken in the first. Foskey definitely just, it just feels like hand and glove type fit, man. It really does. So we're going to go Isaiah Foskey here. Out of realism as well. I don't like Isaiah Foskey. Don't think he's a very good prospect. But, you know, if he goes to Bill, man, I'll be rooting for him. I'll be rooting for him. Brian Breezy was the pick for the Chargers. We'll double check that. Uh, Somebody who's considering returning, which means that he definitely might be in that range. Now, tight end definitely feels like something they would be at least intrigued with. Running back, not so much based on the guys who are available. Offensive line, never a bad thing. Uh, I do like Mozzie Smith in this round for them, but again, we already took a defensive interior. Not going to be doing that. Linebacker, never a bad choice. Obviously, they've been able to spend high round picks on linebackers, but you know, receiver, I know a lot of people say they don't need one, but Zay Flowers is here. I'm going to take him. He's a nice deep threat. He's able to play on the outside as well. You know, just somebody who's really special does not get enough love. I feel like he gets a lot of love, but it's not like no one really cares. It's weird. It's a weird type of love. Like, he'll just be featured in a mock draft, but he won't, like, actually get the credit that he deserves. Like, this guy straight up ate up Andrew Booth for lunch, and he's everything that Boston College was last year. I mean, BC is going to be awful without him. Maybe they won't. Maybe we'll see that they aren't. But Zay Flowers is a really special talent. So pick number 54, uh, Cody Mock could be a pretty interesting target for this team because he's so athletic. You know, definitely somebody who I'd be at least intrigued with moving to a right tackle. A tight end, you know, Dalton Kincaid is just He's such a good fit. Let's go Dalton Kincaid. Really good player. I mean, again, you guys might think it's disrespectful to take guys like Luke Musgrave and Darnell Washington above him. They're all really good players. You know, they all play a different role. Dalton Kincaid's more well-rounded. Luke Musgrave's a deep threat almost as a tight end. And then Darnell is just 270. So he's literally just an extra tackle. Pick two, uh, pick number 55, not 255. So Giants, I love going AR for you guys. Did not do that. We decided to end up going Brian Branch, which is a nice, versatile DB. I'm going to go a linebacker here. I think fortifying the defense, continuing to do that, is a very good idea. Jack Campbell is just such a consistent dude. I love it. The Bears. So we're finally back on the board since Jalen Carter. I used to love Will McDonald, man. I used to love him. Now he's edge 17 for me. I just fell out of love. And that happens. That happens with players. And it's okay. Now, we do have some really good guys who are still on the board. I love Brandon Doorless, man. I feel like that guy's going to be a bear. That feels like a bear's third round pick. So definitely keep your eyes out for that. Derek Hall is a guy who I just, I don't know why. Maybe it's because of their colors. I can just so see him as a Chicago bear. Him pairing up with Travis Gibson would be so nice. I love that idea. Pick number 57. So let's see what corners are still on the board. Emmanuel Forbes does not feel like he's out of the question for the Panthers. Um... I like going that route. I haven't gone quarter for you guys in a while. So going Emmanuel Forbes, not a bad pick. Not a bad pick at all. Pick number 58. I really want to go a loose goon sometime in this in this round. I You guys see who I like up in here. I don't know if Tyron Hopper is coming out yet. That's why I haven't drafted him. It just doesn't feel like it's ready. Uh, 58 for the Bengals. So we already went tight end with Michael Mayer. That's a plus. Now, I think we still should go... Should we should still look at offensive line. A safety... You do have two of them that are up for contract. Jail Skinner could be a very nice addition, and he can play linebacker. I'm going to test it out. You guys let me know what you guys think. I think you can actually shift a linebacker. Worst case scenario, you have multiple that are up for contract within the next year or two. So being able to have that as a nice flex versatility guy, and he's a big hitter too, I think that's a total win in the AFC North. I really love Jail Skinner. So I want to show him a little bit of love there. Pick number 59 for the Cowboys. 99% 99% sure this was Jackson Smith and Jigba, unless that was to the Ravens, and it was not. The Ravens, did the Ravens move up? They got Cam Smith, nice. So, yeah, Jackson Smith and Jigba on the squad. DB with Emmanuel Forbes would have been nice. Uh, it sucks that Chris Abrams drain returned. That that hurts me inside, but I'm not seeing any other DBs that are remotely worth it. I know that uh, UVA's corner is not too shabby, but I'm not going to take him at this point. This is going to be Devon A-Chain. You know, you're losing Tony Pollard, and you're getting essentially a guy who I might comp to Tony Pollard. Uh, 424 tested speed. You know, that's pretty damn incredible. It's damn near the record. He's a track star. He's somebody who even put over 200 yards versus LSU in a championship game. So, really good focal point of the offense. 
Pick number 60 for the Chiefs. So in the first, pretty sure we did we go after a tackle? Um the Chiefs went after Andre Carter. Oh, that's fun. That's a new addition. That, I mean, I, I don't mind that at all. I mean, offensive tackle, Cody Mock. Man, none of these guys are ready. None of them are ready, man. But Dewan Jones feels like he's gonna go higher than he should. Oh, that sucks. I mean, I, I'm not going to take a tackle for you guys. I can't do that. Defensive interior. We're going to go Mozzie Smith, the hyper athletic freak. It just makes sense. Um, you're getting two super athletes. Number one on Bruce Feldman's freaks list. Definitely think that'd be a nice addition to the squad. Pick number 61. Uh, we are back with the Panthers. Did we have three second round picks with the Panthers? I think we did. It's kind of clutch. Um, yeah, this was with the Lions trade because they gave up a future first. A lot of y'all did not like that, and that's okay. I respect that. But um, with this pick, honestly, I'd probably try to trade back. You know, there's still guys up here. I mean, Cody Mock could be a fun depth piece, but I mean, now that's just kind of a dick move. But tight end, to be fair, tight end, still in need of a weapon. And I'm going to go Sam Laporta here. I do like that. He's a good player. I say that about every pick, don't I? I know. It's been like one of those things. Probably for the past week, I say I like that a lot. It'll be gone next week. It happens. But I do really appreciate the fit of Sam Laporta on this squad. Good blocker. He had just a really bad quarterback throwing on the ball. So being able to have just a nice, solid receiving weapon, never a bad thing. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit more so you guys get to see even more of my board. There's Mozzie. Love him. Uh, pick 62. Y'all want a right guard? Let's Let's have a fun right guard. Let's have a fun right guard. Christian Haynes, man. This guy's special. Uh, he's one of the most athletic offensive linemen I've ever seen. So, you know, Hal Vitae, probably there for a year or two more based on the guarantees. This is a perfect guy to develop over a year or two and then step in and absolutely maul everybody. So uh, that might be one of my favorite picks I've done, honestly. And then ending off the draft, pick number 63, which was used to be able to be moved up for Miles Murphy. Don't at me. Or actually, you can. That's okay. I'm always open to criticism. Um, did we go off the line earlier? I feel like we did. I feel like we did. Uh, Andrew Voorhees. So we got Andrew Voorhees as well as Keely Ringo. That is a nice duo. I still think offensive line should at least be in the consideration. And Elusagoon as a center, not a bad idea. I do not want for Billy Price to ever play another snap of football. So um, Elusagoon. Step in. We all know that Rodney is probably thinking of retiring. So Elusagoon going to be pairing up with Andrew Voorhees, two six-year seniors being able to hit from the ground immediately running. Love it. So that's going to be the video. Check out tomorrow for round two. Thank you guys always for supporting. See you on the far side. Peace.